In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. good? You're looking good. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, we're in the book of Genesis, okay? So if you got your Bibles, you can bust them out this morning. Um, or if you do like an, an app thing, you can, you can bust that out as, as well. Um, Genesis means the beginning. It is the record of what God administrated in the first seven days of this time space that we engage with. We have this Chapter 1, that begins with Bereshit in the first epoch of time, before there was anything, there he was. Elohim, mighty God, the one worthy to be worshipped. Bereshit, Elohim, bara, which means to create. So in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So this is seven days established. We get into the second chapter of Genesis, and Moses says, now let us step into the order of creation. So in Genesis chapter 2, it's like we go back into the first chapter, except for he, uh, he CSIs it. A any CSI fans? Just me? Okay. All right. CSI, they're always like, pull it up, enhance it. Let's go closer on the man in the blue shirt. Enhance it. Closer, enhance it, closer, enhance it. Wow, we're in his brain. Come on, right? This is kind of what Moses does. He says, Genesis chapter 1, in the beginning, pull it up. There's seven days. Chapter 2, enhance it. And so we have been in the second chapter now where we are in Eden, God's abode, in this tabernacle that God did not ultimately create Eden for man, but he created Eden for himself and then invited man to be a co-steward, to be a partner, to be uh, sons and daughters in this experience. So in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, um, this is a review where we have been on the sixth day. God said, let us make man in our image and likeness and after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. Amen? Okay. Over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and every creeping thing and everything that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image and likeness. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them. And he said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Everyone say multiply. Yep, it takes two to multiply, okay? It takes two to tango, and it also takes two to multiply. Glory to God. Okay, he said, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over every living thing that moves on the earth. So here we see God creates mankind in his own image and likeness. Then we come to Genesis chapter 2 where Moses says now, enhance it. So in Genesis chapter 1, this is what God did. In Genesis chapter 2, this is how he did it. Just look at the person next to you and say, the details matter, okay? The details matter, okay? The details matter, yeah. The details matter. And what we're actually going to see here are some details pertaining to how God created his image bearers. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. And the day of the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. This is Genesis chapter 2. Let's look at verse 5. 
When no bush of the field was yet in the land, and no small plant of the field had yet sprung up. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain on the land, and there was not yet any man to work the ground. The more I read the account of Genesis, the more my understanding probably becomes more Hebraic, in that my understanding, and I don't know if this is your understanding, is that the seven days recorded in the Genesis account were most likely not seven 24-hour periods of time. Um, when I read the book of Genesis and I read about the seven days of creation, I see this as almost like seven seasons. The Hebrews would read this either as like seven seasons or seven eras of time. Seven moments that were always interrupted by a declaration of God that would transition that moment into its next redemptive phase according to the, uh, according to the declaration of God. The reason why I say this is because Moses captures here a moment of time where there's the creation of the earth a, and a certain certain amount of flourishing, but it says here in verse 5 that when no bush of the field was yet in the land and no small plant of the field had yet sprung up, for God did not cause it to rain on the land. Why? Because we're, we're in a era of time when there wasn't an image bearer that would take what God had declared into being to nurture the decree to bring about the, the, the prosperity, the, uh, the, the potential prosperity that is there within the blessing needed nurturing in order for there to be a manifestation. Are you with me this morning? God had done such a great thing, and yet he had only done a great thing in part. You see, the first account of creation, God brings about operational order, or cosmos, which means order, and he brings it out of chaos. So we saw this, we studied this, we spent four months in one chapter, you guys. And if you're new here, don't worry. We're still only in the second chapter. We got a lot of chapters to go, all right? So calm down. I wish I could have read. No, you're here now. That's all that matters, okay? The first account of creation, God brings about order out of the chaos. And yet, there is this place of commanded blessing that needs nurturing. And we see this. We see the ground was not yet fruitful and plentiful. Why? Because God had not yet created his image bearers to take the blessing and bring flourishing out of the blessing. Now you need to get this before declaration conference. Why? Because some of you have been to more prophetic conferences, okay, you, you, you've been to so many prophetic conferences, and, and, and you think, maybe this is the one, maybe it's the one, maybe this is the one, if I could just get to the right, I travel the earth, going to every, per I have touched Dutch sheets, I have a lock of Bobby Connors hair, I have an entire collection of cassette tapes full of prophetic words that were given to me. I got a declaration and as good as all that is, I need me a new declaration. <laughs> now I'll tell you the problem with Seattle, the problem with Seattle, she needs a declaration. If we could just get the right people together and make the right declaration, we could unlock Seattle. For seven days, God declared. Well, for six days, he declared. And then he, seventh day, he came and sat in the fruitfulness of his declaration. We have declaration after declaration after declaration, yet the declaration was incomplete. Why? Because it needed sons and daughters to steward the declaration to bring about the operation of prosperous blessing. 
Whoever told you that if you got a prophetic word, just put that little prophetic word up there on the shelf, and it's of, if it's of God, it'll, it'll, it'll manifest. That's like me saying, here's some seeds. I want you just to put them on the shelf, and if it's of God, it will become a tree. You got lied to by a minister that was hosting Hope Deferred. And because of their disappointment, they don't want you to get your hopes up based off of that prophetic word. The example is this. If if I gave you a check for a million dollars, which I'm not going to do, and you took that check and you put it up on a shelf, it's actually worth nothing. It's just a piece of paper. It's no different than any other piece of paper. When does that piece of paper take on value? When you take that check in your human fingers, you get into a car or you dance all the way to the bank and you deposit that check and they tell you that's a legitimate, bona fide check. OMG, pastor gave me a million dollars. Taking a year off. Oh yeah! You had to take the blessing and you had to do something with it. You have to take the seed, you have to plant the seed, water the seed, nourish the seed. And this is what God said. Hey, I have done a good thing. I have established this and yet it's incomplete. It cannot come into what it needs to come into unless I create my sons and daughters to partner with what I have created and blessed. Because there has to be a people on the earth that will steward the blessing of God to see it come into operation. It's called administrating the blessing and declaration of God. It's administrating what the prophets have released to see it become a reality. And that means there has to be a people that says, that's not just a word for the body of Christ, that's a check and it is for me. Not your word, Masood. My word. Not for you, James. Mine. It's mine. It's mine, and I will steward it until it begins to grow. What are you stewarding? Where I'm just going to go another day, and enough days over time will produce something. No. What are you stewarding? What word are you holding on to? It's time to steward the word. Time to steward the blessing. It's time to be fruitful. It's time to multiply. It's time to subdue the earth. It's time to take responsibility. Okay, oh, that's all good, Darren. That's that awesome. Thanks, bro. No, really, that's really good. Thanks, dude. No, really, dude. I dig that. Awesome, man. I'm just building myself up in the Lord. Verse 5 says, When no bush of the field was in the land, no small plant of the field had yet sprung up. This is what it says. Here you have this dynamic that God had created, but the ground was unclaimed and uncultivated. The ground was unclaimed and uncultivated. What's the problem with Seattle? Leviathan, that big, gigantic principality, it looks like a crocodile. I say that. Well, why is, why is the serpent in the garden? That's next week. The ground was unclaimed and uncultivated. By the way, Psalm 115, verse 16. The heavens belong to God, but the earth belongs to us, by the way. Seattle, that's your problem. Here we go. Verse 6, and a mist was in the ground. Okay, there was water in the ground. Okay, that's awesome. But the ground had to be tilled. There had to be waterways that were dug. Okay, the, the ground had to be worked. Okay, yeah. And then, everyone say, and then? And then? And then, enhance it. Verse 7. The Lord God formed the man of dust. Adam, man of dust. Okay. From the ground, he formed him. All creation was created the same way. God would speak. Creation occurs when people speak. You're at where you're at because of what you have spoken. 
but I didn't mean it. I know. I remember, I was, I was meeting with a couple, and this, they're having a thing. And the, and the girl said, um, we were in a fight. I said, okay, what happened? She goes, I, I said, I got mad. Said, well, what'd you say? Well, I said, well, then just divorce me. I said, well, did you mean it? She goes, of course not. I said, do you want to get a divorce? She said, of course not. And I looked at him. I said, well, what did you say? He said, fine. I said, did you mean it? He goes, of course not. I said, why'd you say it? He goes, because I was angry. So you guys are getting a divorce. That's right. But you didn't want to. That's right. And you don't want to. That's right. Then why are you doing it? We don't know. I know. You decreed a thing. You, dec you decreed a thing that you didn't even mean. And now you're, now you're eating of the fruit of that declaration that you decreed. We see here that God formed the man from dust, okay? This is a big deal. All the other ancient religions, uh, if they were to read this, they would say, what? You have a God that plays with dust? Everything else was decreed. All of creation was decreed. But when God created Adam, the dust man. When God created Adam, he didn't speak him into being. What did he do? He came into his creation and he began working in the dirt. Getting his hands dirty. It says that mighty God began fashioning, framing, molding the dust. And then God takes him face to face, nose to nose, mouth to nose. And it says that God <sighs> up his nostrils. He breathed what? It says the breath of life up his nostrils and the man became a living creature. We live in Seattle. Seattle's a very spiritual place. Everybody's spiritual in, in Seattle. They're not exactly Christians. You say, hey, are you into other realms? Whoa, of course. Yes. Are you into spiritual things? Yes. You believe in Jesus? No. You know, get, get, get behind me, you Republican, right? Get, get behind me, you white evangelical, right? Do you, do, you, do you believe in spiritual healing? Yes. You know, Seattle's got a lot of belief. Seattle's actually one of the easiest places that you could do evangelism. Seattle's such a harvest field. I mean, for those of you that are waiting for the harvest to be ready, you have no idea where you're living. Seattle, you could just bump into someone and they can get saved, you know, in, 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 in Seattle. There's this understanding in our city that this understanding of life, okay, that this life force is in everything. And what's so interesting, what's so curious about, about this blueprint, this, this, this blueprint for our creation, our origin story, is that it says that God created everything and he released all this life. But his, his image bearers were radically different compared to anything else that he created. Why? Because he fashioned it with his own hands and then he breathed his breath of life into his image bears. J just to clear with me right now, breath of life. Guys, life is going to become such a theme in the chapters ahead. We're going to learn that there were two trees in the garden. There's the tree of knowledge of good and evil, and there was the tree of 
life. Now, when it comes to the understanding or dynamics, when it comes to the, the science of life, if you ever want to get really confused, if, if you ever just want to be very, very confused, more than you already are, just go to YouTube. And YouTube, um, TED Talks Consciousness. And you will, see, you will see all of these people, all these people that claim to be experts in the area of the study or science of consciousness. And here's what you will see. You will see all these people that say they understand consciousness, and yet they are all opposing and contradicting each other. You know, you'll have one person that says, consciousness is the understanding. You know, you know, you know, all of a sudden, the next video will be of like a, a yogi, like a, uh, not, not the bear, but like, you know, like a, like a, you know, a guy with a big, with a big white beard sitting on a stool with a big white float. You know, and, and you're like, okay, th this guy's from the East. Surely he'll have an understanding of what consciousness is. And he'll say, in the, in the same way that life force flows through the ocean, the ocean is in you. You are in the ocean. The consciousness and life force of the, you know, and people are like, yes, I get it. You know, no, you don't get it unless you ate way too many mushrooms, tripped out in the middle of the woods, and then you're like, no, it's true, man. It's true. Like, you know, you, you know and, and we're, we're in Seattle, and we, we get this. It's like, no, don't cut down that tree. Why? Me and that tree, we got a thing. What do you mean? We share the same life force. It has consciousness. I have, no, not this tree. They call it, you know, tree, I, the, you can watch video of people repenting and apologizing to trees and trying to break the trauma off of the trees. What? Because, like, how dare you cut that? Like, how dare you throw that lobster in the boiling? Like, those are, that's, that's not, pers that is not water. Those are lobster tears. And lobsters scream when you throw them in the water. It, let's just, let's just have a moment of silence and hear the cries of the lobsters. This lit, like, like consciousness, that like every living thing has consciousness and consciousness is in every, and, and, and this, is, this is what we know, that consciousness, okay, is not something that science is going to be able to give you a mathematical equation to explain. Why? Because consciousness, okay, is not, um, is not a mathematical equation. Consciousness is Consciousness is the wisdom of Yahweh Elohim. It is the life and light of Yahweh Elohim um, encompassed and encased um, in the breath of life that was given to our first father, Adam, in, in the garden. God released the, the, the God stuff, if you will. Consciousness is the God stuff. It's it's who he is. It is his ruach. And everything that God breathes on takes on a life force that never expires and it never ends. Yep, yep, yep. It's true. Yep, yep, yep. All right. The Bible, okay? The Bible. Why do we even read the Bible here? Why do we even do Genesis? Why do we even... Why do we even believe that we don't exist over God's word? We don't have the luxury to edit it, to cut it out, to say, well, that's not politically correct. So, you know, so we're just going to take it out. And, and that, that's a thing, by the way. People, you know, that are censoring God's word and saying, well, that, I don't feel good about that. So because I don't feel good about that, I'm just going to delete that. And we've got censored Bibles. Okay. Okay, now the problem with that is that 2 Timothy 3.16, all Scripture, say all Scripture, is profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. How is it that all Scripture is profitable for teaching, correction, training for How is it? Because it says in 2 Timothy 3.16, all Scripture is All scripture is God breathed. That the same breath of God 
that came from Yahweh Elohim, that went up into the nostrils of Adam, that brought forth the consciousness and life force of God into Adam, okay, that same life force is on the word of God. And when you read God's word, you recognize something. This is living. This is active, and I'm not over it. I am under it, and I better submit to it. I don't get to edit God's word. God's word gets to edit me. I don't get to cut stuff out of the Bible. The Bible gets to cut stuff out of me. It is living, it is active, it is sharp, it is like a scalpel, and it does its job. And when you say the breath of life is the breath of his spirit, it's the breath of who he is, it's my battery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We see that Jesus, he was about to empower his uh, disciples. We see it in John 20, verses 21 and 22. Jesus, he would say crazy stuff, okay? Thank God I don't. Um, Jesus would say stuff like, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. So here's Jesus, and he's about to empower, he's about to set out his disciples to go do the crazy stuff. And guess what he does before he sends them? Here's Jesus, he's like, hey, if my father brought forth the breath of life through, then I'm going to activate these guys the same way that my father does it. This is what Jesus says. Jesus said, peace be to you. As the father has sent me, now I'm sending you. And when he had said this, he gathered all his guys together. He breathed on them. And he said, receive, yield. And receive the Holy Spirit. And you know, what I think, you know what I think happened? I think the Holy Spirit came on them. I think that there was an impartation. I think that right at that moment, Jesus breathed on them. This shit wasn't just symbolic. This was a mystic impartation. This was an invasion of heaven and earth. Breathe on the person next to you. I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. You just came from a church where you had to sit 14 feet away from somebody, and now you're like, man, this is way different than the life. Right? <laughs> oh, my God, where's your mask? Right? Oh, my, like, not only do you not wear, you breathe on, it's the church that breathes on each other. Ah! Listen, this isn't my idea. This is, this is, this is, this is, I'll just blame it on heaven. In heaven, they breathe on everything. Okay? Okay? You go to the grocery store. Now, do me a favor, when you do your own impartation, spray something or chew on something so you got a little heaven on earth, not, you know, not the breath of hell coming out of you, <sighs> you know, smelling like a dragon all up in you, you know, brush your teeth, okay? Genesis chapter 1, right? In the beginning before everything was the darkness and the chaos. Right? The tohu vavohu. Okay? Um, and what's right there in the middle of the madness? What's right there in the middle of the chaos? The, the ruach, the, the breath of God. That the same breath of God that was hovering in the chaos was the same breath of God, the same ruach, the same God stuff, the same uh, gift of consciousness and understanding and life was released from Yahweh God. That same breath, okay, that's breathed on the word of God is the same breath that sustains you, that holds you together, that, that guides your life. That even in your rebellion, and, 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 and every person here, uh, whether you're, you're still in hell on earth, doing hellish things and thinking hellish thoughts and you're not necessarily partnering with life yet, I'm glad you're here. Okay, it's not an accident that you're, he you're here. But um, I believe that, that today's an interruption day to get you out of hell and to get you into heaven on earth. Okay, praise, praise the Lord. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah. okay, yep. Yeah. But, but here's, here's, here's the thing, that that same breath of 
God that was hovering over the face of the waters is the breath of God, the spirit of life that is on the word of God. It is the breath that hovered over the chaos. And in Acts chapter 2, when the people of God were waiting for God the Holy Spirit, God the Holy Spirit came, okay, and he came like, and when say like, a mighty rushing It wasn't a wind that came into the upper room. It was like, so the same breath of God that hovered in the chaos back in the was was in the beginning before there was anything. There was the breath in the darkness in the chaos. And that same breath of God that is on the word of God is the same breath that came into Adam's nostrils and brought forth the consciousness and the understanding of this is who I am. And God, this is who you are. And I'm alive in this gift of life and, and you you're sitting in your chair right now and you have your understanding and hey you, th this gift of life it is so powerful you actually have the ability to to turn me off right now to go into tomorrow to start worrying about it and, and, and you have the ability that I can be talking I can be shouting I can be skipping dancing I can be completely absurd you could be looking at me but completely not even aware of anything that I am doing why because you're no longer in, t in, in today you are fretting about tomorrow you're thinking about the future. And you could have a room here with 250, 300 people in a service like this with 300 different movies playing all at the same time. 300 different places that were going in the service. 300 different kinds of, of things. But what happens when the breath of God comes into a room when we are gathered together in one accord? Do you want to know what happens? All of our consciousness all of a sudden tunes in to one frequency. It is the frequency of his spirit and our imaginations and our faith begin to integrate and begin to come together. And all of a sudden in this place, this is why the devil hates worship so much. This is why the devil hates um, worship and praise. Why? Because worship and praise says you matter, your life matters. It just doesn't matter right now because the only thing that matters right now is is Jesus, him crucified, his life, and, and, you know, you know, I don't know, are, are you a, <laughs> are you a one song person, a two song person, a three song person, or I came prepared person? A one song person, that's really good by the way, a one song person only needs one worship song before they're like, oh yeah, God, you are real, you are good, and I love you, I love you. A two song person is, gosh, I hate this song, they do it every week, then you get to the second song, oh yeah, this one's a little better, then you get to the third song, you're good, good father, it's who you are, it's who. now you're in. A three song person, you get the idea, there's the already prepared person that you come like, oh, it's going to be so on today. I'm going to be with the family of God today. There's going to be an opportunity today. We're going to connect in the spirit today. We're going to go places in the spirit today. Heaven's going to be open today. Why? Because of this corporate place where all of our movies get put on pause and we tune in to the one living frequency, the one ultimate heavenly radio station, the voice of God and with the voice of God comes the faith of God and then all of a sudden miracles start happening and nobody's even praying and all of a sudden people start saying I believe in Jesus I never believed in Jesus why because the atmosphere has radically changed this is the power of the breath of God the breath of life that comes to switch you out of the frequency of decay and to switch you out of the frequency of death to shift you out of the frequency of doubt. I doubt it. I believe it. God did it for me. He could do it for you. I got to have lunch with uh, Masood and Sarah this last week. Amazing people in the church. I don't know if you've heard the story about their grandbaby that was under tremendous pressure from the medical system to abort that baby because of the heart, and from my understanding, the veins weren't properly connected to the heart in a way that the heart would be any sort of good towards that baby. 
The family was put under so much pressure, getting phone calls. When are you going to abort the baby? We need to get you in here. This isn't fair to the baby. It's not fair to you. And they, they believe, and I, I still remember um, we, were, we were in a service, and I, and I got one of the most generic words of knowledge, one of the most unaccurate, the, the, the exact opposite of, of Sean Bowles. You know, he gets people's names, addresses, all this stuff. I'm like, is there a woman here? <laughs> no? No? I was in this service, and the Lord spoke to me about somebody that was trying to get pregnant or somebody that was pregnant, but there was only, there was only, one, there was only one person in the service. So I was like, well, that's good. Yeah, I, I didn't even know. It's something about pregnancy, right? And your kiddos were, were in the back of the service there, and I had no idea you guys were getting phone calls, and it, you got to get in here. This baby's not going to make it. I remember I said, Andrea, get back there and pray. Andrea ran back there and just started, just started praying. They, they've, they've given their testimony here. In fact, the media team made it its own clip. All the way up to the very end, you guys, they had to even sign a document saying that they were taking full responsibility for the birth of this baby. This baby was born perfectly normal, perfectly healthy. <laughs> ah! And they don't even really understand it. Still this day, they don't really understand because the normal ways that veins should connect to the heart, the, the baby's not normal, and yet the baby's perfectly normal. They don't even, they don't even get it. So Sarah was here at Touch of Yeshua, and a, and a, and a young gal uh, came here with the same, with, with, a, with, a, with she was pregnant and had a baby with, 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 a, with, with, heart, with heart problems. And she came up to Sarah and said, they're really concerned about my, my baby who has these heart problems. They're really concerned. And Sarah said, listen, lady, out of everybody here that could pray for you, let me tell you what Jesus did for our family. Is that, is that lady here in the service? You see her, sir? Okay. We're going to, so, Jesus heals her baby. She was also having sleeping problems and some other kinds of things. Jesus heals her baby. Jesus, Jesus heals her. Sarah leads her into a relationship with Jesus. And she's been attending here on Sundays. Just declare to me right now, it, it's, it's the breath of life. <laughs> and, and with that breath comes life thoughts, life activities. It snaps us out of death thoughts and death activities and, and death choices and death words and death reactions. Why did you say that? Did you even mean that? No. But the frequency of death just came out of me. And it was trying to determine a, that negative profession was trying to determine a negative location where I would abide outside of his active manifestation of life and life abundantly. Jesus said, I have come, not that you would have belief, said, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Yeah, you have to abort that dream. You have to abort that call of God. You'll never come into everything that God, you screwed up one too many times. Lay it down. You're too old. You're too young. You're too divorced. You're too divorced again. You're too religious. You're too non-religious. You're too dyslexic. You're too ADD. You're too, you're too, you're too. Wrong tree. That's eating from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Wrong breath. And then there's the tree of life. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come that you'd have life and life abundantly. Remember Ezekiel, the, the prophet? Remember the crazy vision that he had? The Lord brought him to a big valley of dry bones. 
it was prophetic for the Lord that was going to bring Israel out of a place of radical defeat and bring forth the army of God. God said to Ezekiel, hey, what do you see? Ezekiel's like, a lot of skeletons. What does God tell him to do? He says, Ezekiel, I want you to prophesy. Prophesy to what? Prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the what? Say to the, say to the breath. Say to the same breath that hovered in the chaos. Say to the same breath that went up Adam's nostrils. Say to the same breath that is on the word of God. Say to the same breath that came into the upper room in Acts chapter 2 like a mighty rushing wind. Prophesy. Prophesy what? Prophesy to the breath of God. Prophesy to the Ruach. And say, thus saith the Lord, come from the four winds, O breath. Breathe on these slain. Breathe on these bones. Breathe on this shame. Breathe on this disappointment. Breathe on it. And may your breath of life shift it, transform it, bring it into a state and status that it's never even been in before. Better than if it was brand new. Not just fixed. Better than new. Ezekiel says, so I did. I prophesied. So I obeyed. I, I prophesied. I did just as he commanded me. And guess what happened? The breath of God came into them. And they lived and they stood on their feet. An exceedingly great army. Why don't you stand up to your feet? When a generation forgets its origin, it'll abdicate its destiny. The goal is not just to survive today. The goal is not just to survive tomorrow. The goal is to open up these ancient gates that the king of glory would come in. And not just into this place, but to go from this place, to go from this Eden and to be released into the earth. Solomon would say, guard your heart. Why? It is the wellspring of. Why don't you put your hand over your heart this morning? Would you just consider praying with me this morning? And would you just consider giving Jesus perhaps your unclaimed and uncultivated soil. Would you invite the breath of life to come into your heart that he would take what maybe has been desolate and he would transform it into his place of abiding grace. That you would host Eden in your heart. That when you speak, the breath of life would be attached to every word. That when you stand in your neighborhood to someday when you get back to your office cubicle, that from your feet would come forth the grace and glory of God, even into your corporate workplace, that wherever you go, this Eden dynamic would come and flow out of you from your eyes to your ears, from your fingers, your touch, from your, your shadow to your spit to your breath, that everything that comes out of you would come from this Eden place, that every, that every thought would be, would be filtered by this Eden dynamic, that the king of glory is seated in his garden, which has been planted in 
inside of you. Would you just put your hand on your heart and welcome this King of glory to breathe his breath of life upon your heart. That just as Aslan came into Narnia towards the end of the story and began to breathe on the stone statues and the statues were transformed back into living, breathing creatures. May this great king breathe on your heart and restore life and courage and purpose and identity and destiny. That the same breath, the same Ruach that hovered over the chaos waters would come and hover in the midst of you, bringing forth life, Light, wisdom, clarity out of confusion, purpose, confidence, the, the surety of your sonship. That you would have that awakening to Abba moment. Abba. Daddy, wow, I'm not an orphan, I'm a son. Father, come. Father, come. Father, come. Thank you, Lord. Abba, come. Abba, come. Okay, with your hand on your heart, are you ready to create this morning? Would you ask Holy Spirit? Ask Holy Spirit. Would you show me the word that you spoke into me in the beginning? Show me the word that you, ah, into me, the moment my spirit entered into the womb of my mother, would you show me this word that you have created me to breathe, to speak, and to live on the earth? Would you show me that word so that in you I can speak it and release it right here, right now? Listen, if you ask him, he'll tell you. If you're watching at home, do this right now. Put your hand on your heart and say, Holy Spirit, show me the word that you have spoken into me. That word that carves out the core of my identity. That word that forges my future in destiny. For some of you, it might be one word. It might even be two words, but just listen real, real clear. All right, did you get it? Did you get something? Wave at me if you got, if you got your word. That's a good word. All right, listen. What you just heard, that was Holy Spirit. So don't let doubt rob you of this moment. Is that good? Don't let doubt interfere, okay? This is what we're going to do. On the count of three, I want you to declare this word. I want you to declare this word, and I want this word to come out of you, to frame an atmosphere around you. I want this word to go before you, so it can prepare the steps before you. Is that good? You got your word? Here you go. One. I'm going to turn off my mic here in a second. I don't want you to hear my word. Then I'd have to kill you. I'm just kidding. All right, all right, all right. Not funny, not funny. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. Just take a big drink right now. 
yield right now to that breath of life. This is interesting. I, I feel like the Lord just showed me something. I feel like there's somebody here and in your home, there's actually been a spirit of suicide in your home. It was actually on your home. So the people that were in your home before you, okay, also came underneath that same oppressive uh, spirit. And I feel like the Lord is saying that He's giving you discernment and authority to break the power of that spirit over your home. And it's going to shift something in your kids. It's going to shift something in your marriage. Uh, and, the, and the Lord says the power of that thing is broken. Listen, here's what you can do. When you go home, just open up the door and just command that principality and that power to get out of your home. And it'll have to leave. Command it in Jesus' name. Okay? And then just fill your home with the breath of life. Breathe on everything. Breathe on the refrigerator, the cat. Just begin. Let's just go ahead and put up our hands again. Thank you, Lord. Whoa. Some of you, you've had the thought, I'm dying. If that's, actually, close your eyes. So, so, if that's you, you've had the thought you're dying. And the doctor hasn't even told you that, anything. But you've had that thought, I'm dying. Just wave at me. Awesome. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. How, how many else? Yeah, awesome. God bless you. Why are you saying awesome? Because... That's a lie, and you're not dying. Yeah. Come on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Who, who else? Who else? You, you've had that thought. I, I think I'm dying. I think I'm dying. Wait, wave at me real high. Okay, awesome. Okay, if that's you, I, I want you to just declare with me right now. I have believed a lie. Let, let's all do it together. I have believed a lie, and I confess the truth. That I am not dying. I declare I will live and not die. The power of that lie is broken right now in Jesus' name. On the count of three, I want this whole church to say broken in Jesus' name. One, two, three. Broken right now in Jesus' name. Come on, let's shout to the Lord. Come on. Woo! And when that voice comes back, it's not going to have any power. It's not even going to be believable. It would be like if I told you, bro, you're actually a unicorn. And you just laugh at that. That's what it's going to be like, okay? And you're just going to laugh. The power of that is broken. Let's put up our hands again. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the breath of life. 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 Blow, 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 blow through this place. Blow, 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 blow through this place. Blow, blow, blow through this place. Blow, blow, blow through this place right now, right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. There's someone here and your daughter is in the occult and she's getting quite high up. I, I just hear like the word mastery. And, um, and, and the Lord says that she's about to fall out of her, out of her mastery. And literally the, the, the witchcraft that she's been involved with is going to lose all of its power. And I, I declare the gift of salvation visiting your home. And your daughter who thinks she is a witch is going to be saved. She's going to come to the Lord. So I just declare that prodigal daughter, come home, come home, come home, come home, come home. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. 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 Yeah, receive the breath of life. Yield to the breath of life. Yield to that breath of life. Hallelujah. 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 Yep, yep, yep. Yield.
Shirlama ki shikirlama sororo ko shirlama nada si kirlama nada soro. Shirlama sokororo ko shirlama si kirlama si kirlama sa kiriya. Shikirlama sokorlo mo so kirlama si kiriya. Breathe, 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 Lord. Breathe on us. Breathe on us. Breathe on us. <sighs> breathe through us. Breathe through us. Breathe through us. Hallelujah, God. You good? Yeah? All right, so your assignment's to go breathe on something. <laughs> Metaphorically or literally, but, but I want you to see yourself as an agent of Eden. Amen. Releasing and administrating. Bringing about flourishing and production out of God's commanded blessing that has already been released. Amen. I want you to see the seed has already been released but we have to plant it, we have to water it, we have to steward it, we have, we have to care for it. Religion doesn't care about anything. Religion's not about stewardship, it's just about rule following. But relationship means the only way that you can see something grows, you have to care for it. You have to nurture it. It has to matter to you. 